الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله العظيم من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح للأمة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فعليه أفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استن بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين رب العالمين وأوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل وقد أمرنا بالحق وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوى الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we thank him we praise him and we recognize that he is in no need of our thanks and praise because he is al-hamid subhana he is the one who is praiseworthy whether or not we praise him and we recognize that regardless of how much we thank him we will never thank him enough subhanahu wa ta'ala we bear witness that he is the only one worthy of worship and he is the only one worthy of unconditional obedience. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his peace and blessings upon his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We bear witness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him with the truth and that he is our example and that in following his sunnah, we would inshallah ta'ala achieve the highest level of Jannah al-Firdaus in his company sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send His peace and blessings upon Him, His family, His companions, and those that follow. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرُهُمْ وَاشْكُرُونِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Remember me and I will remember you. Be grateful to me and do not be amongst those who are ungrateful and disbelievers. And subhanAllah, I mean, dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Qur'an, many times we can find something very subtle, but it has a huge meaning. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the attitude of the person who's raised up on the Day of Judgment, having ignored his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, having ignored his meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his entire lifetime. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the details of that exchange, we need to take heed. We need to listen very closely. Because in the way that a person talks is a very good indication of his character. As Imam al-Qayyim rahimahullah described, that the tongue and the heart, the example of the tongue and the heart, is like a spoon and a meal and a plate of food. So the tongue represents what is in the heart many times. It gives you a pretty good indication the way that a person talks, the way that a person carries himself. His khuluq, his character, his inner beauty or lack thereof is demonstrated many times in the way that he acts. And on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the exchange in many different parts of the Qur'an. But in one particular part, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكًا And whoever turns away from my remembrance, he will have a miserable life. Not just a miserable life, 
is like the world is closing in on you. Subhanallah. Like a person is sitting inside of a room and he feels like the walls are, you know, that the room is shrinking and that the walls are coming closer to him and that he can't breathe. He feels like this dunya is choking him. Why? Because he turned away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only time he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when something bad happens. When there's something negative in his life. Then all of a sudden he remembers that he has a Lord. All of a sudden he remembers he has a creator. And instead of looking to that creator to thank him, he says, why did you put me in this situation? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do this to me? Right? Why is this God of yours? He goes to those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frequently. الذاكرين. He says to them, why is this Allah that you always remember? Why is he doing this to me now? But he never remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other times of his dunya, he only remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at bad times. He feels like this life is suffocating him. And we will raise him on the day of judgment blind. You imagine, subhanAllah, in this world, he was veiled from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was blind. His heart was blinded from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now he's raised up on the day of judgment in this hectic scene, in this chaotic scene, blind. And he says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا He says, panicking on that day, O oh my Lord, why did you raise me up blind? And I used to be able to see. And subhanAllah, in those words, you can already tell the attitude of that person. Look at the difference between the way he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way that he describes his situation of health and his situation of illness, and look at the attitude of Ibrahim alayhi salam and the way Ibrahim alayhi salam is when he says, وَإِذَا مَرِضُّ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ When I become sick, he is the one who heals me. He is the one who gives me the cure. One person attributed only the bad part to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not say, Oh Allah, why, why, am I being, why was I raised up blind when I used to be able to see? And he, so he did not attribute you know, the, 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 the seeing that he used to have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he only attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his blindness on the day of judgment. You see, subhanAllah, there's an inconsistency. Ibrahim alayhi salam says, When I became sick, he attributed all the good to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when I became sick, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cured me. Allah was the one who cured me. And this person is saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why did you raise me as blind when I used to be able to see? Not that you used to grant me the ability to see. No. وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا And this shows you the attitude of this person versus this person. Right? One person feels entitled to the good in his life. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him a blessing in this life, he feels entitled to it. And the only time he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when that blessing is taken away. Then he says, why me? Why me? Why was this taken away from me? Why is God doing this to me? And the whole concept of theodicy comes in, right? Why does God do bad things to good people? Why do bad things happen to good people? Why do you know, good things happen to bad people? Why me? Why me? Why me? But while he had the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he never looked to the person who was in Somalia who did not have something to eat or drink. And he did not look to the person who was in Palestine who has to worry every day about someone trying to kill him, about a soldier in front of his house, who has to worry about a missile coming upon him. He did not think when he looked at those people, why me? In the sense, why me? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala privilege me? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me these blessings? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah. He didn't thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Oh Allah, thank you for not, or, or he didn't, or you know, Alhamdulillah, Ya Allah, all praise is due to you for not putting me in a situation where I have to worry about oppression. We're not putting me in a situation where I have to worry that today I might not have a meal, that today I might not have something to drink. The only time he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is whenever وَإِنَّا وَإِذَا غَبْتَ لَهُ فَقَدْرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ 
The same person who would say when things are going good, oh, Rabb, you know, Rabbi Akraman, right? Everything is good with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests him, إِذَا مَا بُتَلَامُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِسْقَةً His sustenance becomes qadr. Qadr means to, you know, to, to restrict also. It becomes a little bit restricted, right? He didn't go into absolute poverty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not put him in a situation where it was life and death. But it becomes a little bit, it becomes a little bit restricted. What does he say? Qala Rabbi Ahana. So my Lord is trying to humiliate me. Why does God do this? Why does Allah put me in this situation? Why, do, why is this happening to me? I used to have this, I used to have that, I used to have this, I used to have that. Right? And I'll give you an example. You know, I was in Louisiana, and many of you may remember Hurricane Katrina when it struck. Uh, now it was close to seven years ago. And subhanAllah, I can just remember the behavior of certain people. Right? They lost their power and their electricity in their homes, they, the, the food and their, and their, uh, you know, their refrigerators that all went to waste. All of, everything was going away, right? And whenever they were calling onto the, onto the welfare services, when they were calling upon all of these different, you know, uh, when they were calling the electricity company, the power company, what would they say? I was supposed to have electricity. I was supposed to have power two weeks ago. What's taking you so long? Entitlement, right? This belongs to me. All of this belongs to me. I was supposed to be in the United Kingdom. Right? I was supposed to be able to go to university, to go to school. I was supposed to be able to have food and drink. I was supposed to be able to get married. All of this was a given. I, didn't have, I did not have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Right? That was all given to me. The only time you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is whenever you get to your, your car. Right? And then now the car is not starting. You did not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank Him when the car was starting for two, three years, every single day. You did not say Alhamdulillah for that. But whenever the car doesn't start, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? But the believer remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says something very powerful to Ibn Abbas sallallahu ta'ala anhu. Kun ma'allah fil-rikha, ya'anufka fil-shidda. Be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in good times and Allah will know you in bad times. That is applicable to this dunya and in the akhirah. In this situation that we are in right now, there is not a single person that could, that could, you know, that could not call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Him for forgiveness and ask for repentance. Istighfar is open for all of us so long as we are alive. We can make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ وَدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, commands, call upon me, I will answer you. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ And if your servant asks about me, that which is concerning me, tell him I am, clo or I am close to him. He doesn't even say, قُلْ I am close to him. I answer the caller whenever he calls upon me. I'm close to him and I answer him. But you know what? On the day of judgment, you cannot take that dua for granted anymore. And the people in hellfire, what will they be saying? They, won't be, they will not be able to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anymore. So instead of saying, Ya Allah from hellfire, they would say to the keepers of hellfire, can you call upon your Lord to make things, you know, to just lighten up the punishment, punishment from us just one day? SubhanAllah, just to lift this punishment for one day? Why? He never asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection in this life. Because there was no word, there were no warning signs in this life. Right? He only asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection when he was in hellfire, when it was too late to talk directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You had 60, 70 years to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him for protection from hellfire. Without seeing hellfire, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised you that just as his paradise is true, his hellfire is true. The only time you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he is in hellfire and it's too late to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now. You have to ask the angels to make dua for you. You have to ask the angels, can you ask your Lord to just lighten up the, the, the punishment from us just for one day? SubhanAllah. Whereas in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you an opportunity. Remember Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remember you. 
Right? On the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remember you every single time you made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you did not see the answer of that dua the way that you wanted to see it in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn it into an ease in an akhirah. But it was not forgotten. Anytime you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not forgotten. Anytime you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not forgotten. So that is true in the hereafter, and that is true in this world. When you don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in good times, then when bad times come around, when you did not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in prosperity, and then adversity comes around, then all of a sudden, you realize that you have not built your Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to withstand the storm. And think about this. This is the problem essentially that people tend to try to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only when things get bad. Right? That's like saying that I'm going to try to build my home when the tornado comes or when the hurricane comes. That's when I'll go and I'll try to start building the home. It doesn't work that way. Remember Allah when everything is good and when everything is easy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remember you. And that is true in this life and in the next life. Don't just try to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when all of a sudden things are bad. And don't blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, why me when things are bad? In fact, we should be saying, why me right now? Because there are some people that do not even have the privilege to pray Salat al-Jum'ah today. There are some people that are prohibited from praying Salat al-Jum'ah today. And we are amongst the few that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ni'mah of Islam. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ni'mah of being able to come here and remember Him. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making us from the Muslims. And that is enough of a blessing. That is the greatest blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from al dhakirin al shakirin Allahumma ameen. Aqulu hawi hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nisa al muslimin. فاستغفروا إنه هو المفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عرضان إلا عرضانين ولا عاقبة للمتقين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Dear brothers and sisters, when you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your good times you will find that your times of hardship also become times of ease and your times of bad will also become times of good because you will be in a state of making ihtisab you will be seeking the reward of that because you will understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you enough to be thankful for at all times and you will be content and you will have sakina and tranquility and you will not be left feeling like the world is closing in on you at all times. And why is Allah doing this to me and why is Allah doing that to me? And you know, subhanAllah, many times we question our own dua and while we are making dua, we already have a sense of hesitancy. We already have hesitation when we're making du'a. Is Allah really going to answer this du'a? Does this du'a really work? And by already having that hesitation, is this du'a going to work? And will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer me? You have already killed your du'a. Because as long as you have certain certainty with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have yaqeen with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will never disappoint you. And I just want to leave you with one story in that regard. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيمٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانْ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ Just like you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to respond to your dua, respond to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, is, is the burden on, on the one who is small, smaller and the one who has less to give, or is the burden on the one who is bigger and has more to give? Think about it that way. You know, whenever you go to the marketplace, who has to pay first? Who has to pay first? Right? Who, do, you, do you receive the product and then you pay? Or do you pay and then you receive the product? If it's an expensive product, if you walk into a marketplace and it's an expensive product, and you have a, a coat that's worth, you know, uh, 4,000 pounds, then you have to pay the money before you receive it. But if you walk into a grocery store and, and, and you buy, you know, a, a chocolate bar, You'll get the chocolate bar, then you pay right after that. But you'll first get the chocolate bar in your hand. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is al-ghani. Allah is al-hamid. He doesn't need us. So His product, His answer, His rida, His pleasure, that sense of tranquility and His blessings, that is expensive. So we have to first put forth everything we have. Inna Allah hashtara min al-mu'mineen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purchased from the believers. Them, their selves and their wealth, 
bi anna lahum al jannah as a result allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them jannah but before you receive the expensive product you have to put forth what you have and i'll leave you with this one story that truly demonstrates that Imam al-Jawzi rahimahullah narrates a beautiful story about Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala. And then Imam Ahmad rahimahullah was the most famous Imam of his time. And subhanAllah, Adhabi rahimahullah even narrates that at his janazah alone, he died in one day, and he was buried on the same day that he died. And at his janazah, there was 1.3 million people. The Pope did not have 1.3 million people at his, at his funeral, right? And that's without mass media, and that's without getting, you know, no. This is just by word of mouth. That's how much the people loved him. In one day, it traveled all over, and people were coming together to pray Salatul Janaz on Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala. So Imam al-Najawti rahimahullah who wrote a book about the virtues of Imam Ahmad. He says, subhanAllah, that one day Imam Ahmad rahimahullah traveled to an area where he was not known. I mean, he was known by name, right? He was known by name, everyone knew him, but back then Imam Ahmed did not have a Facebook page, right? And there weren't newspapers back then, there weren't emails and things of that sort, there weren't t TVs, you know, for people to watch the Imam Ahmed. So people knew Imam Ahmed, but they didn't know how he looked. So Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, had traveled to an area of Islam, and he wanted to stay inside one of the masajid. He walked, he walked into a masjid to sleep inside the masjid. He didn't know anyone in that area. Right, and he wasn't going to burden anyone and say, hey, by the way, I'm Imam Ahmed, so people can come open their homes for him. He went and he tried to sleep in the masjid. So the Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, is the one narrating this story. He said, so the Hadis, the, the guard of the masjid came to me, and he told him, the masjid's closing right now, you have to get out. And he told him, he said, look, you know, I'm, I'm a traveler, I don't have anywhere to stay, I don't know anyone. He says, no, you have to get out. So he says, I went then, and I slept at the entrance of the masjid, and he said, the Hadis came, and he said, you have to move. And he said, look, I don't, I don't have anywhere to go. What do you mean I have to move? He said, you have to go. So what did he do? Imam Ahmed rahimahullah says, he picked me up by my legs, and he dragged me to the middle of the street. Imagine if he knew who he was doing this to. Right? He did that to Imam Ahmed rahimahullah. He picked him up by his legs, and he dragged him to the middle of the road. And Imam Ahmed rahimahullah did not say, do you know who I am? How dare you? Imam Ahmed Rahimullah kept quiet. He just said, SubhanAllah, I'm not going to do, I, I can't do anything about this. So Imam Ahmed Rahimullah says, there was a baker across the street, right, Khabbaz, who was baking his bread, he was baking his dough. So he came to Imam Ahmed and he says, listen, you can stay inside my shop until the morning, inshallah. Just come stay inside my shop. So Imam Ahmed Rahimullah went inside that shop and he was sitting there baking. You know, putting the dough together, putting it inside the oven, and he's baking and he's putting the bread together, putting all the, the, the dough together, right? And the entire time he's saying, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. And Imam Ahmad rahimahullah is shocked. Because, you know, people get tired from making dua at one, or making dhikr. You know, whenever you say, I'm going to make tasbih, I'm going to say subhanAllah, you're going to hundred times, or I'm going to read surah that Allah says many times. Usually, you lose yourself somewhere in the, in the middle, and you just, okay, well, you know, you forgot, right? Something came and distracted you. He said, this guy was focused, right? He was consistently doing that for hours and hours. Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, was so touched. So he said to him, he said, Anta, how long have you been? Anta fi hal. How long have you been in this situation? He said, Ayu hal. What situation? He said, Al tasbih wa tahleel. Constantly remembering Allah subhanahu wa taala, making tasbih and tahleel. Right, saying Subhanallah, la ilaha illallah. He said, I've been doing this for years. I've been doing this for years. You know. And Imam Ahmad rahimahullah. Look at the question that he asks. He says to him, and what is the result that you've seen in your life? You know, you've been making tasbih and tahleel your entire life. Have you seen a dream of Jannah or something like that? You know, what is the result that you've seen in your life? He said, ما دعوت الله لي شيء إلا أعطاني إياه I have never made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything except He gave it to me. Ever. And Imam Ahmed rahimahullah shah, he says, ما دعوت الله لي شيء إلا أعطاك إياه You never made dua to Allah except that He gave it to you? And he said, I have never made dua to Allah for anything except that He gave it for me. He said, except for one thing, وَمَا أَزَالُ أَنْ تَضِيرُ He said, I'm still waiting for the answer of that dua. 
And he said, and what was that dua? He said, an amr of Imam Ahmed. That I would one day get to see Imam Ahmed. <laughs> so Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, embraced him and he said, he said, here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bringing you Ahmad, dragging him by his feet to your shop. Meaning if you would not have made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see me, I would have slept in peace at the masjid and every, this the whole journey would have been okay. Right? But subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was answering his dua, even a dua like that. Right? He didn't have the means to go and see Imam Ahmad. He said, I just want to see Imam Ahmad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought him in that way. That whole series of events. Why? Because he was consistently in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرُكُمْ وَشْكُرُونِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Remember Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forget you. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In good times and in hard times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forget you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer those du'as either in this dunya or in the akhirah but you will never be forgotten so long as you remember him subhanahu wa ta'ala because there is no person who goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes to him even further When my servant comes to me walking, I go to him rushing SubhanAllah, this is how our Lord is so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the dhakirin wa shakirin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who remember Him frequently and who thank Him frequently and who receive the reward of that in this dunya and in the akhirah. Allahumma khir bil mu'minin wa al-mu'minat wa al-muslimin wa al-muslimat al-ahyai minhum wa al-amwat inna ka sami'un qareebun wajibu da'wat. Allahumma khir lana wa al-hamna wa a'fu anna wa la tu'addibna. Rabbana wa lamna anfusana wa inna mtakhir lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al-khasirin. Allahumma khir li wali. بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على النعماء يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة